Hey everybody, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're going to be smoking some pork belly burnt ends. If you haven't tried these yet, you're in for a treat because I think they're one of the best bites in barbecue. You can serve them as an entire meal or as an appetizer at a party and trust me, they're always a hit. We'll be making ours on our Pit Boss pellet grill, but you can follow along with this recipe no matter what type of smoker you have. We'll show you how we season, smoke, and sauce them, but most importantly, exactly what to look for while you're cooking them so they have that perfect melt-in-your-mouth texture every single time. Smoking pork belly burnt ends starts with picking out the best pork belly. Ideally, look for strips like these. I usually get them at Costco. You can also buy an entire pork belly and cut it into cubes yourself, but this is a lot less work. Make sure the pork belly is skinless and look for the leanest strips you can find. All pork belly is gonna have a lot of fat in it, but you don't wanna end up buying strips that are just all fat. You want plenty of meat in there too. Lay them out on a cutting board and slice them into cubes as evenly sized as you can. Today we're going to be seasoning them with two of my favorite rubs for pork. The first one is the Gospel from Meat Church. This is a great all-around barbecue rub to use on pork and chicken. It's got a good balance of salt and sugar and it puts a nice color on whatever you're smoking. The second rub I'm using is Honey Killer Bee from Cosmos. As the name implies, this is a sweeter rub. Whenever I'm using multiple rubs, I like to put the saltier one on first and the sweeter one on second. That way the salt from the first rub works its way into the meat, while the sugar from the second rub is closer to the outside to help make a nice bark. Let the rub set on the pork belly for about 20 to 30 minutes while you get your smoker set up. Today we're gonna to be using our Pit Boss Pro Series 1150, and I'll be using these Gourmet Blend barbecue pellets from Bear Mountain. Make sure you always store your leftover pellets in a good airtight container like this one from Oklahoma Joe's. They'll last longer, and I think they do make better smoke when they stay dry and aren't exposed to humidity. I like this storage bucket because of the mesh screen you can use to sift out some of the sawdust before you add them to the hopper. I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. Next, we'll turn on the pellet grill, let it run through the startup cycle, and set the temperature to 270 degrees. I'm going to be lighting up a smoke tube with some more of the Bear Mountain pellets interspersed with some cherry wood chips as well. We made an entire video showing you exactly how to light a smoke tube. It's an easy way to get some extra smoke flavor when you are using a pellet grill. I'll put a link to that video down in the description as well. Also, quick reminder to always open the exhaust chimney on your pellet grill as much as it'll go when you're using a smoke tube. It really makes a big difference in helping keep the smoke tube from going out on you after you close the lid. Today we're going to be putting the pork belly cubes on a wire rack over a foil lined baking sheet. This will make it a lot easier to rotate them and move them around all at once rather than putting them on the Pit Boss grates directly. It'll also make cleanup a lot easier later on. You want them on the wire rack raised up above the baking sheet rather than on the baking sheet itself. This will help make sure there's plenty of smoke and airflow around all sides of the pork belly and so that when the fat renders, it has a place to drip down below. Try to space them out as evenly as you can. I like to put them fat side up just like a brisket, but you don't have to go crazy putting every single one going the right direction. Once you're up to temperature, go ahead and place the rack of pork belly in the smoker. Let them smoke at 270 degrees for about three hours at least. You don't need to do anything during this stage other than make sure the smoke tube hasn't gone out and maybe rotating the pan every hour or so so that they cook evenly. So our pork belly has been smoking for about three hours. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. So they're getting a nice color on them. You know, with pork belly, it's not so much about time and getting to a certain temperature internally, like with other cuts of meat. It's really more about look and feel and how the fat's rendering and how the bark on the outside is looking. So you can see we're definitely getting fat render at this point, but they still there's still a lot of internal fat that needs to render out. This would not be very edible if I took a bite into this right now. But they're getting a nice color on them. They're getting some smoke, uh, nice uh, outside crust. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate these again because some of the ones on the edges are getting a little more done. But I'm gonna uh, let these run for maybe another hour or so. And like I said, what I'm really looking for is a nice dark color on them. We can check the internal temperature. You know, but as fat renders, it, they're gonna kind of stay in that 150 to 160 range for a while. It's not really about getting to a certain temperature, but it's about how long you stay at a certain temperature to really allow all that fat to render. So we're gonna let them go a little longer. Our smoke tubes getting down at the end here. We'll just let that run out, but um, I'll go ahead and rotate these. Let's give them one more hour and then we'll see how the bark's looking at that point before we take them to the next stage. been another hour so we're at the four hour mark of smoking these let's take a look you can see that 
the color definitely changed a little more in that last uh, hour here. It's definitely more the color I was looking for. I mean, after all, these are called burnt ends. We want them to look a little burnt, especially on the edges. So you can see, and I would recommend having your uh, vinyl gloves over your cloth liners, like you see us using other videos. It's just a lot easier than trying to pick these up with tongs because they get pretty slippery. But, you know, you're getting a little more burnt on the edges here, or burnt coloring that uh, bark that you're getting set in place like that. So again, they're coming along nicely. There's still a lot of fat to render in the middle there. This is still not ready to eat. Uh, it's still pretty fatty, but it's coming along a lot more than it was. So at this point, there's a couple things you could do. You could just let them keep continuing to smoke right here on the pan until they're uh, all the fat renders and they're edible. You're gonna get a much crispier pork belly burnt end if you do that. Um, it's gonna get even more crispy on the meaty part here like this. At this point, for me though, this is enough of a bark, enough crispiness. I want to move them on to the next stage because I think doing it the way we're going to do it just gets them a lot more tender and fall apart uh, versus kind of a crispier uh, burnt end. In our next stage, we'll continue cooking the pork belly wrapped in a foil pan so that they get more tender while more of the fat renders out. We're going to add a half a cup of brown sugar, a stick of butter, and a quarter cup drizzle of honey over the top. This will add a nice glaze on the outside of the bark that we've already started. You can skip the sugar and honey if you don't want them to be as sweet, but I would recommend at least using the butter. This will help keep them moist and tender as they continue to cook. Cover the top tightly with foil and place the pan back in the smoker, still at 270 degrees. Pork belly has been braising in the butter and sugar for about two hours now, and I want to show you kind of what I'm looking for to know that this stage is done. So let's go ahead and open up our foil. And you can see they still keep their bark pretty nice, which is what we want, okay? Um, but we're, what we're looking for is you remember there was fat on the top of the pork belly when it was raw, and there was fat running through the middle. So we take a piece like this, you can see that it's starting to fall apart now. That's what we want because this fat in the middle, it's rendering, it's melting, it's becoming more melt in your mouth, which is gonna give you that better bite and that better texture versus it being rubbery where you can't pull it apart. So this is what I'm starting to look for to know that the pork belly uh, burn ends are done. As far as the fat on the top of the pork belly, let's find a good piece here. So here's a piece with some on top. You're gonna have fat on the top still. I'll try to bring it in the sunlight so you can see. You're gonna have fat on the top. I mean, this is pork belly, but there's your meat, there's your fat on the top. But what you want is that when you kind of push your finger into it, it gives a little more like that versus just bouncing back and being rubbery. So that's more of that melt in your mouth texture that you're going for. You remember back when we made our brisket and we were pushing on the bark on the outside to make sure that our finger went into it versus being bouncing back to know that it was ready to get wrapped. Kind of the same idea on the pork belly here. So now you've got this nice crispy uh, good meat with this soft fat and it's just ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and get it out of all this butter and grease here and put it in a, uh, a fresh pan. And I mean, at the end of the day, just give it a taste test. You can take one of these and give it a try. If it tastes chewy and rubbery, you know, put it back in for a little longer. It's not ready yet. But if it's if it's falling apart and it's it tastes good, then it's ready to go. So that's the ultimate test at the end of the day. So now we got our pork belly burn ins in a nice clean pan. We're gonna take a little bit of apple cider vinegar. I like to do this, especially on really, uh, you know, rich, heavier barbecue dishes like this just about a couple tablespoons there and we're gonna lightly drizzle this over the pork belly trying to get it kind of evenly around and then we're gonna toss and coat it and the reason I'm doing this is because we got so much fat and salt and sugar and you want to have that little bit of acidity to kind of cut through all that and that's what's really gonna get you that you know all around flavor just kind of hitting on all cylinders so don't neglect to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar you know, you can add it to your barbecue sauce or put it on first like I'm doing, however you want to do it. That's what keeps people, uh, you know, reaching back for another bite and makes it, you know, addicting. So you want to make sure you're getting a little bit of acidity in there. The next thing we're going to do is add our sauce. I'm going to use this Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle. I love this sauce on pork. I've actually never used it on burnt ends before, but I'm really excited. It's made with real raspberries, real chipotle peppers. I would highly recommend checking it out if you haven't. If you've never used Blues Hog sauce before, uh, their Tennessee Red is really good on pulled pork. We did that in our pulled pork video. And then you see me use their Champions Blend all the time. So when some of these are falling apart, you can see like this one. And that's how we know they're ready to go. So that's okay. Just be a little gentle, you know, putting the sauce on. We're gonna go a little more. And we're gonna throw this back in 
just for about 20, 30 minutes or so, just to get this sauce nice and tacky on the pork belly. Uh, we're gonna leave the foil off this time and just kind of let the air get at it a little bit to thicken up a little bit, and then they'll be ready to eat. All right, our sauce has gotten nice and tacky on there. You can see the bottom gets a little crispy. That's what we want, you know, for that burn end feel. The fat on the top is nice and soft, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take a bite of this and see how we did. It is so tender, so delicious. If we hadn't let the fat render, given enough time as we did, you would not have been able to bite through it like I just did there. It would have been rubbery and kind of nasty biting through it, but this is just delicious. Melt in your mouth. You've got plenty of sweetness, uh, saltiness from the rub, smoke flavor. That raspberry chipotle sauce is delicious on this, as I assumed it would be. I definitely recommend trying it out if you haven't tried Blue's Hog before. Um, these are really, really good. You don't really have to let them rest that long. Serve them while they're hot and they're ready to go. We hope you enjoyed this video. I'll put a link to the full step-by-step -step recipe at madbackyard.com down in the description below if you want to print it out. I'll also put links to all the products we used today down in the description as well. Thanks for watching.